Welcome along to a very special edition of NBL Now. And it's special because there's three rounds to go in the regular season. And we're going to do our very best to try and make sense of the ladder and what it's going to look like for the back end of what's been an incredible season so far. I'm Jack Heverin, alongside Liam Santa Maria, who is, of course, one of the best brains in basketball and the perfect man for this scenario. <laughs> Liam, you've had a bit of a chance to have a think about this. Mm. Three rounds to go. This is pretty wild. It is wild. It's super exciting. That's the best part about it. We, we started this season talking about how every game matters. Well, that has never been truer, mm. really. And in particular, right now, the back end of the season, the teams, everything's so tight. It might as well be the postseason right now with how important each one of these games will be. But I, I don't know if I'm going to be much help, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, my maths has never been uh, excellent. And you're going to need to be unbelievable to try to work out where all these things fit together. I think we've all had a number of goes at trying to predict <laughs> this and we've come up with so many different calculations. So before we get into that, mm. let's just have a recap at the ladder as it looks right now with three rounds remaining. Realistically, Liam, we've got a race for top between yep. Melbourne and Perth, mm. and then we've got everyone else trying to get the remaining four spots. Yeah, that's right. And that's a fun race in and of itself, isn't it? Because uh, top spot is a massive advantage. Sure, finishing top two, but top spot, you're going to play one of those teams that comes out of the muck mm. from the play-in action, and you're going to have home court advantage right throughout the final. So that's one race that's going to be tight. And then the other one is to try to just get in there and to extend your season past the final uh, round of the regular season. And for me, when I look at it, I, I still think 14 and 14 gets you in regardless of percentage okay. at this point. I reckon 13 and 15 with a good percentage is probably where fifth and sixth sort of thing will land. But there is a world, like if Melbourne and Perth keep winning, and if South East Melbourne and Adelaide win uh, enough to make things interesting, and all those guys in the middle keep beating each other, yep. I think there is a world where someone will get in with 12 wins wow. and a very good percentage. So... A lot to still play out. The other thing that jumps out to me when we look at that ladder as it stands is the percentage issues for Brisbane in particular, mm. but also the Cairns Taipans who are really going to be trying to cling to that potentially sixth spot. Yeah. Their percentages could come back to bite them. Yeah, that's right. So gone are the days where we look at all the different head-to-head -head tables that between the teams. And now, like, how well did you do over the course of the year? Getting big wins and also, if you went down, keeping your losses to a low mark and some teams you look at Tasmania's yeah. percentage have done a really good job of that over the year so just to recap as well with the way that the finals and the play in into playoffs is structured for this NBL 24 season you can see the value of finishing top two can't you like we were talking about Melbourne and Perth that there, there are so many advantages for being one of those two teams for sure and I like the way it's been set up it took a little while for me to get my, <laughs> my head around it. Hence why we're showing the graphics. Yeah, <laughs> and we saw in year one how it all played out last season. But, yep, if you finish top two, huge advantage. Again, if you finish on top of the ladder, huge reward, which makes sense for me over mm. the course of the whole regular season. Then, again, if you finish third or fourth and you get that chance to just go bang straight into the semifinals, that's huge. Fifth and sixth, well, congratulations. You get to continue to sort of have a shot, but it's a long road up from there to try to make it to the championships. So realistically, it all starts now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're having mini play-in games almost every week. So mm. let's have a look at the run home for every single team. We start with the South East Melbourne Phoenix. We're going to start from the bottom of the table and work our way up. We do that because the Phoenix is still a live chance right now. 10 mm. and 15 on the season. They've got Melbourne away on Saturday night in a throwdown. Tasmania on Feb 10. And then Feb 17 in the last game of the season mm. at home against the Sydney Kings. Yeah, so they're alive, but they're on life support. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think they're a realistic chance at this point, right? They've got the 15 losses. So... And they've got a terrible percentage. And I think if you've got 15 losses, you're going to need a good percentage. Yep. But what they can do now is play spoiler. Mm. Because they, they did that in a big way against the Sydney Kings, didn't they? That was a very annoying loss for the Sydney Kings in a lot of ways, but certainly on the ladder. So um, Melbourne, the throwdown, can they get something emotional together to try to pull off another huge win in that situation? And then Tassie and Sydney, um, that final game against Sydney, there's going to be some feeling involved in that some revenge from the king's perspective for what happened last round and uh, and also southeast melbourne could potentially cost the yeah. kings a spot in the postseason 
in that final round, depending how things break from here to there. To ninth on the table, the Adelaide 36ers, 10 wins, 14 losses for the season. Percentage isn't great, 96.4. Mm. Their remaining games, they have Sydney on Friday night at home. That is a massive game at the Adelaide <laughs> Entertainment Centre. Then they play Tasmania away on the Sunday. Home, uh, games against Brisbane away and New Zealand at home in the last round to finish off. Yeah, it's not easy, isn't it? Because you're playing all those teams that are um, in that middle who are desperate right now. Um, but the other thing with the with 36, they've just got to keep winning. You know, they're already at 14 losses with a bad percentage. So they're going to need to... They could, they're probably going to need a win out, realistically, yeah. I think, yep. to make their way in. The fact that we're still talking about them, the fact that they're uh, still beeping... Uh, on their mechanics, I think is, is huge and a massive credit to them as an organization. But they're going to need to win out. So when you talk about like most important games from here, it's always just the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because one loss here probably ends their season. So this one coming up this week against Sydney is massive. The New Zealand Breakers, 10 and 13 on the season. They're eighth on the table right now. They've had a couple of chances, it's got to be said, mm. in recent weeks, Liam, to, to almost take themselves out of this conversation and mm. be a little higher up on the table. One of the big things for the Breakers is that they've got so many games in hand. Yeah, which gives them a little bit of extra wiggle room in terms of the losses they can take on board. But, man, they would be ruining that loss to Illawarra on the road the other day. Because tough travel schedule, sure. Tough team, Illawarra. But they were right there and they could have got that job done and they didn't. So now they're in this situation and they got the 13 losses, but they've got a healthy percentage. They do. 100 plus. So uh, I reckon if they get, they could lose two more and still get in for me. Um, so especially Illawarra, Brisbane, those two games are massive. They're going to be double point games. Teams they are going to try to be taking their spot in the postseason. But again... You know, like all these coaches we'll be talking about, that next one. Can they go to Perth, knock off a top two team and really give themselves a great launching pad to get into the postseason? So you think if they win two of their last five, mm -hmm. they'll be teetering. If they win three, they'll be there. Is that what you're thinking? I think that the getting in with 12 wins is unlikely. Okay. It's still a possibility, but I think it's unlikely. Because I think they're going to need to go at least three and two the rest of the way, but I think they're good enough to do that. Cairns Taipans are seventh, 11 and 14 on the season. We mentioned earlier that their percentage is a big problem for them. Mm. The other problem for them is that they are running out of games. They've played more games than most of the other teams. They've got Tasmania at home on Thursday night, which could very well be the first of a number of elimination finals for them. Perth away and Melbourne at mm. home for their last three games. Mm. That's, that's pretty challenging. Really tough. And, and I think they've got the slimmest margin of error of all these teams that are a realistic chance because they've already got 14 losses. Yep. So one loss takes them to 15 with a really poor percentage. So I think they're probably, when all is said and done, going to be the team we look at that misses out in here. But if they can beat Tassie, Ooh. if, big if, huge game Ooh. on Thursday night, if they can win that, what do Perth and Melbourne do down the stretch? Because they, in a couple of games' time, they might all already have it figured out that Melbourne's locked in on top and Perth's locked in at second. So do they do some funky things down the stretch? We have seen that happen. Yeah, Remember have. Melbourne against Tassie in the final game of the season mm -hmm. and they sat some guys out. Tassie won to get in. They needed to rely on some, some other result, but they won that to get in and then they knocked them out in the semifinals. So what do teams learn from that? But that is interesting for me that they do play Perth and Melbourne in those last couple of games. Yeah, I think the Cairns Taipans are the most vulnerable, aren't they, right mm. now? To sixth as it stands, that is with the Illawarra Hawks and the revival under Justin Tatum has been incredible. Mm. Destiny is very much in their hands like it is for everyone. But 11 and 12 on the season. They've still got a bunch of games to go as well. So Brisbane at home, New Zealand away coming up in the next few days. Sydney on Feb 11 yep. in Sydney could be an enormous game for <laughs> yeah. both of these teams. Mm. And then they've also got Perth at home, Melbourne away to finish their season. Yeah, and those Perth-Melbourne games are, are even later res respectively than the Cairns matchups against Perth, Perth and Melbourne. So if those top teams start doing funky things down the stretch, that could actually play to Illawarra's benefit. But you're right, these next three, 
Brisbane, New Zealand, Sydney, all double point games. If that, they want one of those teams to sort of fall away and take, and they want to take their spot in the postseason. So massive games. They're playing very well. Yeah, they are. Now, three game losing streak. They got rid of that with the two wins over the weekend. And Justin Tatum has that team believing that they can do something special, not just make the finals, but do something special. So can they keep that rolling? Massive game this week against Brisbane. Whoever wins that game puts themselves at a huge advantage to get in. Speaking of the Bullets, they are fifth as it stands right now, 12 and 13. I think their loss on on Australia Day to Melbourne was a bit alarming, Liam, for me, Mm. just in terms of the class difference at the moment between the two teams. Mm. But they're not worried about trying to beat Melbourne just yet. They're worried about being there in the first place. Another team who don't have many games left, which could come back to bite them. They've got Illawarra away, as you mentioned. They've got Adelaide at home, and they will finish their season with New Zealand in New Zealand. Mm. They've got a really poor percentage. And there's a very high chance that that's going to come to back to bite them down the stretch. But they've got 12 wins, three games left, and I reckon 14 wins gets you in. Yes. So they only need to go two, get two of these last three to basically lock themselves in. If they go one and two, I reckon they'll miss. Yeah. Because they'll be 13 and 15 with a poor percentage. Yeah. So, oh man, Illawarra, Adelaide and New Zealand, two of those away. Tough stretch, but every game's tough right now. And I have had belief in this Brisbane team all the way along. And when push comes to shove and these these games get really tough, I think they're going to stand up. So can they go 2-1 and one over these last three games and get in? Oh, I think they can. Well, that lovely tan you have is, of course, courtesy of <laughs> Brisbane Island, where you've been all season. Yeah, well, it hasn't helped my throat along the way, but uh, it has helped the tan. And I, I think they're, they're going to get there. Sydney Kings are fourth on the table. Uh, amazing how th- quickly things can turn. Their loss last Thursday to the Phoenix had us talking about almost crisis talks, and then they beat Melbourne at home on Sunday. 12 and 13 percentage is, is pretty handy right now. It mm. should be good enough mm-hmm. for them. They've got Adelaide, as we mentioned, in that enormous game on Friday night. Illawarra after that. And then the South East Melbourne Phoenix in the last game of the year, albeit away, but it could be a very handy fixture for the Kings, that one. Well, I don't think they're going to miss the finals. Now that they've got 12 wins with a, with a healthy percentage, very healthy percentage. So... That, you know, they really only need to get one more win, yep. I think, to get into the play-in. Um, and you would think with this schedule, especially with South East Melbourne in that final game, that they should be able to do that. We know they're mercurial. They're, they're, they're up one day and they're really, <laughs> really down the next. But they only need to be up one more time, I think, to get in. The question is, can they get in that third or fourth bracket? Because, as we spoke about earlier, that's a huge advantage. So... Uh, I think it, uh, two wins, two more wins will probably get them there. But um, I think, you know, the pressure is off the Kings, I think, as a result of that win over Melbourne. Would have been a different story had they lost both mm. last weekend, mm. right? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Um, but again, they got Adelaide, who know that they need to keep winning every game out. So mm. it's, it's a massive game, that one, as well this week. Jack Jumpers are third, and you can be guaranteed the Kings will be eyeing off that third spot on the table right now. 12 and 12 on the season percentage of 105.52. They have Cairns away on Thursday night, as we Mm -hmm. mentioned this week. Also got Adelaide coming up in this round of matches. That's a home game at My State Bank Arena, and they'll finish off with South East Melbourne away and the Wildcats at home on the Saturday night in the last round of the regular Mm, season. Look at that beautiful percentage, though. They would be feeling outstanding about that. And it's been spoken about a lot recently, but it's a result of the fact they've never lost a game this season by double digits. 12 losses all by single digits. That's a lot of losses, but they've been in every one of those games. Yeah. So it reminds me of Jimmy Valvano, who was like, uh, we'll just, we just got to be in a position to win at the end of the game and we'll find a way to win. Now, this year, they've, they've struggled to find those victories mm. that they previously had. But they've done a good job of being in it. And that has held them in great stead. And despite Scott Roth's sort of comments over the course of the journey saying, we're not this and we're not that, they're right there. And then I don't think they're a team that you want to play in a playoff series. And really, the reality is they're going to be in that three versus four. They're probably going to be third hosting that game, I think. And then all of a sudden, bang, they're going to play most likely Perth, Perth, Tassie, semi-final series that's the most likely scenario for how it breaks 
but they've still got a little bit of work to do against some teams that are desperate to knock them off. And they've been a bit hard to catch this year, Tasmania. They're a bit like Sydney. Their best has been very good. Their worst, not so much. So they're the play-in spots. And then we get to this battle for top spot between mm. Perth and Melbourne. The Wildcats, 16-8 and eight on the season. Their percentage is 103.6, which I don't think is going to be a factor at the end of this, but it could be. New Zealand at home, Cairns at home, Illawarra away, and they will finish off, as we mentioned, with Tasmania in Tasmania in the last game of the season. Can they get to top? They can, yep. But they're going to need Melbourne to slip up uh, multiple times, and they don't play Melbourne. Yes. So they don't, they can't go in there and knock them off and kind of give them one of those losses that they need United to take. So they would have enjoyed what Sydney did big time because that kept this top spot conversation alive. Um, I think the percentage realistically could come into okay. play because there is a world where these two teams finish on the same, same um, win-loss record. In fact, if Perth beat New Zealand and Melbourne slip up in one of these next couple of games, they will be on the same record. But the percentage difference is quite big. So um, the most likely scenario here is they get second. They only need one more win. 17 wins locks them in the second. But getting top spot is going to be tricky from here, I think. And so, you know, they're going to be, you know, I think hosting the other side of the semifinal bracket. Red Army, I'm sure you already have been, but start saving your pennies because I think you've got some home finals coming your way mm. at the back end of this season. And then, of course, there's Melbourne United, who have been on top for most of this regular season. 17-7, and seven, they've got the Phoenix in a throwdown on Saturday night. New Zealand at home, which is an enormous game for the breakers that we spoke about earlier. Cairns on Feb 16. Cairns could be done by that stage. Mm -hmm. And then Illawarra at home on the Sunday on the last day of the season. Which could be the game Illawarra needs to win to get in. So what Melbourne United do over the course of these last four games, I think is going to be fascinating to watch. Because A, they need to regain some form. Well, that's right. It's... It's whether they want to flirt with their form. Yeah, and history suggests you don't want to do that. Mm. Um, and Melbourne United as a club have experienced that over the years a few times. So they've only won third, three of their last seven. They need to kind of start stacking wins together. They need to um, start getting all those main guys in form together. And so they'll be looking to kind of march through some of these next couple of games, right? South East Melbourne and Cairns in yep. particular. That New Zealand one's going to be huge. But then what happens on that final day? Do they sit some guys out? Illawarra, they might need that win. There might be a whole bunch of teams around the league cheering on Melbourne to beat the Hawks to try to get to keep their spot in the postseason. So that one I've got circled on my calendar to say that's going to be must-watch TV. And the other complication with that last day is that the very last game of the season is Adelaide-New Zealand in Adelaide. Now, that game could still very well be live as well. Maybe. I Maybe. Certainly for New Zealand, yes, in terms of where they finish, Adelaide might be done by then unless they keep on winning. But I think you know we've seen it time and time again the the league come down to the final day. It will happen again in one way, shape, or form or another. Who finishes where will be decided on that final day. Okay, so they are the runs home for all of the teams. We've had a good look at the ladder. What do you think it looks like when we're all said and done? Ooh. Three rounds to go. This is tough. <laughs> Top line only. What do you think changes? Uh, oh, I think Melbourne, Perth, Tassie hold their spots for what they've got right now. Probably Sydney too, to be honest. So I reckon that three versus four game will probably be Tassie, Sydney. And then I reckon Brisbane, New Zealand. Yep. Five and six. So Illawarra miss. I think so. And the reason why is just my ongoing, undying faith in the Bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding on to that for dear life. But secondly, I, I think New Zealand are coming. I think New Zealand are coming. They've got the good percentage. And I think they're going to win quite a few of their remaining five games, which is going to put the squeeze on Illawarra, Cairns and Adelaide. Well, I stayed up very late last night doing this. And there are so many combinations, so please don't hold me to it. I've got Brisbane missing. Yep. I've got New Zealand coming into that top six, Brisbane coming out. Mm -hmm. I've also got Sydney finishing third mm -hmm. and Tasmania fourth. Which okay. I don't think you have to bend the mind too much to see how that could happen. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we disagree on Ill Illawarra and Brisbane, and they play this round. Yep. Huge game for those teams uh, coming up in a couple of days. Hopefully that helped.
It may not have, <laughs> but hopefully it's helped. We spent a lot of time taking a look at the run home, but this is one of the most competitive seasons that we have ever seen. And it just means you're going to have to watch every single game. Liam, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think it did help, but it was fun nonetheless. We'll see how it all pans out. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you next time on NBL Now.